We're going to be making a clock today. I've already pre-made the sugar cookies. These are vanilla seed um, almond sugar cookies. And the recipe is given under my recipes on my blog. I used a fancy square and the link is also given on my blog to where I got it. And then this is a combination, which I've talked about a lot, of mocha and cinnamon of Fondorific. And I like this fondant a lot because when I'm doing any type of fashion work, it has unbeatable time. It won't ever get hard on you. This has actually been sitting out for about 10 minutes before we even started. And as you can see, it's very pliable. And the aroma is amazing. It's also Sydney's very favorite flavor. And this one is just a 50-50 of the Cinnabon, or the cinnamon, excuse me, and the mocha. So to make our clock, I want it, I want it to be a timed arrow clock. I thought the fancy square gave me the more, the most beautiful look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this out a little so that it's nice and put this here and put my cookie here and then I've got a little bit of vodka right here. You can use piping gel if you'd rather. I like the vodka it evaporates and because of the way that I'm doing this it doesn't want to open for me. Because I'm going to be cutting the hole out, I have a little bit more control over how much I am using. And then this is just a regular cosmetic brush that I really like. So because I know that this is the only part that I want to have this particular color of fondant on it, this is the only part I'm going to moisten lightly. You don't want to moisten it too much because you'll have a soggy cookie. But you want to make sure you moisten it enough that it doesn't evaporate before you get done. So we're going to take our fondant piece and we're going to line it up. And I had already, when I baked the cookie, kind of made a little hole in there, or a little circle, excuse me, so that when I went to do this part, it would just give me a guide of where I'm going to put it. So I'm going to take my smoother and gently smooth out any imperfections and attach it to the cookie. And then I'm going to go in with my circle cutter and I can kind of see that line. So I'm just going to press and twist a little bit. So I'm going to put a spatula underneath here and gently just lift this up. And because I didn't put any alcohol or anything on the circle part, I'm going to smooth this out just a little bit where I don't like how it I can put this back in my bag and use it again. So now I've got my clock face. I do want to make sure that this is on pretty good, so I'm going to smooth it out just a little bit. And that looks pretty good. I'm pretty even here. Okay. So then we're going to make the face. And because I want my face to be a light white color. Move this out of the way for a second. I am only going to use the cinnamon, which the cinnamon is a bridal white. So you get a nice light color. And that way my face will have a nice light color. So I think that should be about enough. And I'm going to move him out of the way so he does not get hurt. And for those of you who don't know me, I started talking without introducing myself. I'm Bobby of Bobby's Baking Blog. My little baking partner in crime is in D.C. But she's on FaceTime right now watching as I put this together. So if I mess up, she'll let me know. That noise was my pasta machine. That's optional. 
I just want everything to be even, so it's on a zero, which would be your widest. I'm just going to go ahead and cut my circle out and I'm going to twist to make sure I get a nice, clear, clean piece. And I'm going to put this back in this bag so it does not. Well, Fonderific actually doesn't ever dry out, but. This is one of the reasons I like it so much. But it has endless time to work with. Alright, so now I've got a nice, beautiful circle. I'm going to bring the cookie back in. I'm going to lift this up with my offset spatula and move it over for a second so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go back into my alcohol and I'm just going to brush my circle. Make sure I get that nice and moist without overdoing it. And then I'm going to go ahead and gently just sit that in there. Now it's okay if I have this space in between here because later on when we go to make our clock face, you'll see why that isn't going to matter at all. So I'm not going to worry about that. If I wasn't going to make an outline, I would then be panicking. But because I am, it's okay. Alright, so what... I'm going to do is I want to do a lace type of brush embroidery and I have some scraps pieces of lace or cut pieces of lace I should say and I'm just looking for the pattern that I want and this is the one that I want so I'm gonna put this on figure out which side I like how I want it to look on there trying not to get too much on the face of the clock I think I like this one better yes this one was cut better for it so as you can see you've got it almost looks like a six petal blossom so I'm going to put this on in the corner here I'm going to gently press it with my hands I don't want to make my fondant move or distort and then I'm going to lightly just smooth it on there until I can almost see the fondant raising through the mark. And the idea is we're going to later on brush embroidery this. I want to be able to see what I'm doing. I want to have enough of, a, of an impression that I can go over it with my royal icing. And this cookie could be the, done the same with all royal icing. You would just flood this part, this kind of tan, and then this part, probably white, I would say. You wouldn't be able to do this part of the lace, but you could make royal icing lace and still do a brush embroidery or do a five petal, uh, scribe a five petal cutter into your corners and do the same brush embroidery technique. You would not be doing this, obviously, you'd be ruining your real life thing, but you can do it with either. These are for Sydney, and she likes the fondant with the real life thing. The cookie tends to say softer, and it has quite a nice little texture between the soft fondant and the crunchy royal icing. And I do not flavor my royal icing with anything but lemon because I didn't want it to mix too much with the flavors I already have going on between the cinnamon and the mocha and the vanilla and the almond of the cookie. When I make my royal icing I just use a little bit of lemon juice. As you can see I'm getting a nice impression. I want to get some of the stitching in here so that I can have a nice broad area. It's okay if we go over a little bit of the face of the clock. I mean, I would go over the whole clock, but a little bit of the face is okay. Like I said, we're going to be putting a border in between the clock and... or the face of the clock and the outside of the clock, excuse me. 
So I had done a drawing of this, which I didn't show you. And I can stop and do this because the Fonderific will give me an un unbelievable time to work on. So I'm going to show you how soft the Fonderific can stay. But this is pretty much what our design is going to look like. And this is going to be some sort of beading or line when we get to that point. We'll have our brush embroidery here and we'll be decorating the outside. So it will end up looking like an antique 1920s clock. And then when I get to these little points here, I just want to use this little teardrop almost of the blossom or the petal of the blossom so that I get the same type of pattern. And after you're done with this particular part, you can allow the fondant to set if you want, or you can go and start brush and birding. It's your preference. If you're pretty confident in your brush embroidery and you don't think you're going to dent your fondant with your fingers, I would go right for it. If not, you can let it sit for a couple hours and go back and do your brush embroidery. Once you do that brush embroidery, though, you're going to want to let that sit four hours to overnight before you do the next part of your And you want to make sure that your lace is facing the part of the lace that would be outside on a dress or a garment. You don't want the back. That wouldn't make a real pretty impression. And if you didn't have the lace, um, you could use, they have wonderful, Gem has amazing lace impression. Um, cutters or stamps, excuse me, or you could use a regular stamp. So that's up to you. But that's our lace impression. Our impression embroidery is done. It's dried, which you're going to want this to dry at least four hours, if not overnight. And I didn't show you before, but I had made a template of my clock. And since I am not a gigantic Roman numeral expert, I went ahead and wrote those Roman numerals in and the way that they would be facing if you looked at the clock. And I've got this wrong. So, alright, there we go. So we have 12, 3, 6, and 9. What I'm going to do is put a pin, center this so that I like it, put a pin above where the mark is, I don't try and keep it as evenly spaced as possible. And my pins are going to mark that 12, 3, 6, and 9. Rather than put all the numbers on, I thought it would be too crowded. And I'm just going to kind of turn these, make sure I can see my hole. And don't worry, those holes are going to be covered up. So we're going to take the pins out. I'm going to look and make sure that I have some holes. This holds a little bit. Okay. okay. So I can put this aside for my next clock. Put my pins away for later. And we're going to start with oh, before we begin, I have a cup of cool boiled water in case I make a mistake. I have two toothbooks, one for black and one for this kind, this color that I'm going to be beating around in here will not be the ivory because I'm going to be painting it gold. So I wanted it to be a little bit darker so I knew that I was remembered to paint it gold. So that's for the deeper ivory or the more gold color in case I need to lift anything up. I will tell you the other thing I have is some Everclear which is a pretty high proof, I think it's 110 proof alcohol. The reason I have that is because black will stain my nice white face. If you need to lift up your color, your your black color, you're going to want to pick it up with your toothpick that you've dedicated for black, and then brush, put your Everclear in some sort of a container, 
take your little brush and clean it up. Hopefully you won't be able to see it or you'll be able to go over it, but black does stain, so that's the best way that I know how to get it up without ruining everything. So the other thing I want to do is I'm going to constantly be making sure, because this is a number one tip, and it's got such a small hole that it gets clogged easily. So I want to make sure that it's constantly clean. And I'm working with a soft peak consistency so that I can write a line without the line breaking. And I will show you that right here. So I'm going to start. I'm going to lift up. And I broke, so I'm going to show you again. I'm going to start. Sorry, I'm going to start. I'm going to lift up. Come on, attach to my little board. Lift up and then release to go down. And make sure that I clean my tip. I'm going to get rid of this so that I don't end up getting black on my hand. And obviously this is going to be my dedicated. And then of course I have my paper towel. So I am not, like I said, the Bex person at the Roman Emotion. I'm actually going to bring back in my little template to see. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go where these little dots are and put a dot so I know this is where my numbers are going to go. And because clocks have little dots. So I'm going to go right over my cookie. I'm going to make a thin X. And those two little one lines. And because the clocks were made then so that you could see the numbers by looking at it the way it was facing you, I'm going to turn my cookie, which I would do anyway, but I can, I don't have to write backwards. So I'm going to do a three. There's my three lines for three. And then my six. Will be a V. And a one. And then my nine will be a one and an X. So I've got my numbers on and I've got black hands. I'm just going to make sure to wipe them down so I don't destroy my cookie with my black hands. On my board. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little dot in the center so that I can put the hands of time in. I'm going to make sure that my tip is piping and everything is good. And everything right now is of soft peak consistency. I have my little line, or my dot, I mean, and I'm just going to take a wet brush and take down that peak. And then I'm going to take my black, and I'm going to go around it in a circle. I looked at a bunch of clocks that were done in 1920, and I noticed they all had this little center thing in common. Now I get to decide what time it is, and at this point I can decide if I'm going to put in my 1 and my 2. I'm not going to draw them in, but I'm going to put little dots so that we know what time it is. I'm 
So I have to decide, what do I want to do? Well, I don't really want it to face up. I think that might be harsh. So I'm going to take a line and come towards the dot that represents number one. And my line broke. And I did say that you don't want to I'm not going to pick up the hoe line. I'm going to try and come in here and just attach it so that way I don't have to worry about the black staining my face. It broke again. So I'm going to lift it up all the way. And I'm going to try and file my mark. Since I've already stained my face, there's no reason to take some alcohol to it. I need to make sure this tip is doing okay. It isn't clogged and it's fine. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to attach it to where that circle is. And I'm going to go over where I stained my face. I have a clock. Obviously not my own face, thank goodness. Alright, so I have it on one. What time do I want it to be? Five after four, five after six. I think five after five might look pretty good. So I'm going to come down to the time. And if you find that your line keeps breaking and you know your consistency is okay, slow down. I think I might have been going a little bit too fast. And before that even hits the face, I'm going to pick it up. Why not? Right. So we'll just go in and tidy it up. And I'm actually going to put the arrow there, so we're gonna we're okay. So the type of arrow that I want to do, I just kind of want to make. A little C curl and come up, and another C curl on the other side and come up. Something that looks old fashioned. And same thing over here. C curl that comes up, and another C curl that comes up. Okay. So I'm going to wipe my hands again, because they have black on them. And pretty much you can't see where I stained, we're good. I do see that my line though is not completely straight, so I'm just going to go in with a damp brush and move it over and tame this in a little bit. Okay. Now for the area between my clock face and the clock, I'm going to do I tried all sorts of different things and what I liked best was a little seashell. So I'm using a number 43 rope tip that is PME and I'm going to pull with pressure and release and pull with pressure and release and just make little dots or little seashells, excuse me, all the way around. I thought it was a nice old fashioned look. It would be pretty painted in gold. And what I'm doing is coming back as far as I think the bead needs to be. And I can see that my tails, where they're hitting that brush embroidery, are not coming down, so I'm going to bring them down a little bit. Okay. And this is where you want your pressure to be exactly the same in your bag, so that your beads will come out the same size. You want to go up, release, and swipe down. Up, release, and swipe down. Up, release, and swipe down. And I am going over a little bit of that brush embroidery in order to get a perfectly round circle. And that's alright. The design just is going to go underneath. Sydney and I and my husband 
actually watched The Great Gatsby last night. She was in her apartment in D.C. and we were in our home. But we watched it together to make sure that I had the right costume for, or that right 1920 look for that era. The Roaring Twenties is one of the times in history that I absolutely adore. There's quite a few of them and they make no sense. I like, like I said, I could go back to 1920, you could drop me there in a time machine and I'd be perfectly happy. I'd also be happy during the turn of the century. And then again, I would be happy during the 60s. So I make absolutely no logical sense as far as the times that I like. And I wonder if in a hundred years someone will be saying that they would want to go back to 2013. I'm just going to even this up a little bit with a damp brush. And now we have the face of our clock. I'm going to let this dry. And then I will go over it with gold dust and a little bit of the Everclear alcohol and give it a gold look. I'm also going to decorate parts of the cookie. But here's your clock. And it's five after five. So we've got the lace pattern in there. I'm going to do some brush embroidery. And on this lace pattern, I decided to have the pattern heading down instead of towards what's going to be the face of the clock. As I said before, this is going to be a 1920 clock. I did a zigzag piping with a number two PME tip. I zigzag because if you look at lace, it has the stitching above and I wanted to kind of give that view of the stitching. And what I mean by that, and make sure you clean your brush after each time, is you have this beautiful lace piece, but you've got this big stitching up here, and then you have your open design. So if I wanted to have the appeal of lace, I need something that's going to give me the stitching. And I might even go back later and overpipe if I feel that I need that. And if I do, I'll show you what that is. Um, I said I just said tip. I did tell you I was working with a PME2 tip. I did not tell you that I generally do not use disposable or um, pastry bags for my piping bags. I prefer using a paper coronet. Number one, I always have parchment paper on hand, so I don't have to stop what I'm doing if I've run out of bags. Number two, um, when I'm finished, the cleanup is very easy for me because at that point, whatever icing I am using, I can then, if I have enough left over, put it into a container that has that color and right now I'm working with an ivory color that I made with um, pink, yellow, and a little bit of chocolate brown. Or if there's hardly any left over, I can cut my tip away, clean my tip well, and just throw the leftover icing away. I can also feel the pressure, which in, I forgot to zigzag that, sorry, which in the brush embroidery isn't quite as important, it's always important, but it isn't as crucial as if you were doing string work or bead work or something where you need it to look exactly the same with each and every stroke or pressure point that you make. And I can feel it in the bag. 
So it's my preference. If you prefer bags, by all means use one. My daughter likes piping bags. She doesn't like sitting around making the cornets. I don't mind if I've got nothing going on. I'm watching some TV. I can sit and make a piping bag at the same time. Or if I'm FaceTiming with Sydney, I can make piping bags if it doesn't disturb her too much. And I noticed right here that my impression did not come out as well as I would have liked. But since I know this design, I can kind of fudge it. It's so small. It's just a teardrop of the petal in that lace. If you don't have a piece of lace or you can't find it in your area, a lace look. Later on, we're going to kind of connect all these flowers together. So it looks like it's a whole piece of lace on this clock. I love the brush embroidery look because it's so elegant and not meaning to say a pen, it's pretty much timeless. It seems that lately everybody's been getting into that 1920 era because of the great Gatsby. But my family has a history with that era. My great grandmother and my grandma who, bless her heart, will be a hundred in December. Um, at the time she was born in 1913. So during the, the Roaring Twenties she was a child. But um, Later on, my great-grandmother was what uh, they would call quite abroad at that time. And rather than just fall apart and let her four children starve, she became a bootlegger of all things. And they lived in Chicago. And she worked for Al Capone. <laughs> so her and my grandma would push the baby cart that they had and bring their alcohol to um, Al Capone. And that was how she kept her family going during that era. So that's always been kind of a favorite of mine. Uh, the other thing I like about brush embroidery Going back to the cookie, you probably don't care about my family that much. Um, is that it's forgiving. So if I don't like something, I can either remove it a little bit with a wetter brush, or I can go in with deeper lines. And the brush that I'm using for this is a, actually it's a nail gel brush, which keeps its form really well. It doesn't seem to get messed up from the royal icing or the sugar. It washes out pretty well because it was made to work with gels. This has never been used on nails. It was bought just for this. But it holds up really well. And we do um, sell these brushes in Bobby's shop. It's the perfect size. It works really well. You want to make sure with your brush embroidery that you start with your back petals first and move in from there. So that way you are not going over your design when you're bringing down your strokes. And since this one didn't have a back petal or a back design, depending on what you're working with, I'll show you. As you can see right here, we've got um, a little bit of stitching and then we have stitching here and then we have a little bit here so I'm going to start here and bring it down and then go here and bring it down and that way I'm not running into my design
I like to use my finger to keep my tip steady. And I like to work in small sections because royal icing dries very fast. And once that is the one thing it won't forgive you. I said it was forgiving um, in this one instance. It won't forgive if you allow it to dry too much before you actually brush it out you're just going to have a zigzag line of your design so you do want to be able if you can't work really fast and I don't like to work fast I would much rather take my time and not worry about it so I use small little sections if you want to work fast and you're confident and you feel good at it go right ahead I mean that's fine that's great I prefer to just do one little section at a time. And I I'm keep pulling my brush away because I'm actually taking off the excess water. If it's too watery, you're just going to have a glop. You're not going to have that stitching and those lines coming down. So you want to make sure that it is damp but it's not wet and that you will know by feel I keep a wet paper towel by my side and a dry paper towel by my side so that I can always wipe off my tip or my hands if need be So right now I'm just stitching. If you know how to sew, then um, you know exactly what look I'm looking for. If you've never opened up a sewing machine, it's not a big deal either. Just look at any garment and you can see what I'm talking about. You want to kind of copy the fashion that's going on. Or the fashion of what you've picked. You want to make sure to keep your brush really clean. If it gets stuck with some royal icing in there, you're not going to be able to drag this down as nice as you would have liked. And you want to make sure to keep your tip clean and clog free um, for the same reason. And I know that other people have a different school of thought on this, but I like my tips. And I will tell you not to put a pin in there to keep the royal icing from drying out or a toothpick or if it gets clogged to do any of that because if you do that especially with the seamless tips which is why I like the PMEs you're going to scratch your tip and you're not going to be able to pipe the same way you're going to notice that it starts coming out in a kink almost sort of way and pretty much that tip is going to be useless for any type of string work that you're going to want to do or anything else I like this um, this PME container or uh, holder it has a sponge and holders for six tips and if I'm working with a lot of tips because you can't see the numbers on here I will write it down but if you don't want to buy one of those you can always keep it in a plastic bag and it will stay just as moist as it would if you kept it in one of those and if you don't want to bother with opening up a plastic bag and taking it out every few seconds so that you can pipe you can wrap your tip in a paper towel with a damp paper towel. So if brush embroideries or working with wear license is gonna be something you're gonna only do during the holidays, I wouldn't invest in too much. You always have Viva paper towel on hand. I did say Viva. I prefer Viva paper towel because there's no design in it. And you can use it for your buttercream to smooth it out. But truly any paper towel or even 
if you have a very clean wash rag that you haven't used for anything else, or a tea towel or a flower, flower towel, any of those will work just fine too. Just something to make sure that your tip stays enclosed and your icing stays pretty much this beautiful, shiny, fluffy texture. I am working with an off-peak consistency and all that really means is that once I got done creating my royal icing, I then um, added maybe a drop or two of water and that gave me an off-peak consistency. So rather than be extremely stiff where you're pushing on it and wondering why your hand is hurting after two minutes, it gives you a little bit more flow. But it's not that soft marshmallow peak consistency which wouldn't show your design as well once the water hit it with the brush. So you're going to want your royal icing when you bring it out and put it into your container and I just usually put it in some sort of plastic container excuse me that um, I have I put a, a damp tea towel over a piece of cellophane and that way when I'm done I can stick it in the refrigerator and keep it for three or four days I buy my eggs fresh so I know that I can keep that my royal icing will stay fresh for three or four days. You can also use um, dry egg whites or you can use meringue powder if you are leery of the fresh egg. I like the consistency of a fresh egg better. I think that the royal icing tends to work a little bit better that way. But it's a personal preference. And if you're going, if you're not using real eggs, you can leave it on your countertop until you've finished your project or you're going to be going to another project and that way you're not wasting all that powdered sugar and work that you put into making your royal icing. And I don't know if I mentioned in the first segment when I showed you how to put the lace on to get the indentation. I deliberately left my face white and didn't make it match the outside because I am going to be turning this into a clock and I wanted it to have a white face. I'm breaking my own rule because I didn't get this back pedal so we're going to bring him in anyway. And that's the thing I like about brush embroidery. Like I said, it's very forgiving as long as you don't let it dry up on you. I'm going to take a little bit shorter stroke so that I don't hurt my design. And bring it in. And this could be used if you know you don't want to make a clock um, to make a garment if you're going to do a dress or if you were doing I have done um, cookie cards and just done brush embroidery on there and given people like a Valentine cookie card or a get well soon cookie card or I'm glad you're in my life cookie card or in Sydney's case a college gift package. This would be great for a teacher you have a favorite teacher for your student and they've just gone back to school and you want to say hey I you know, appreciated last year I'm gonna really miss you it tastes good and it looks beautiful and like I said right now I'm not worried my piping I mean I obviously want to stay in my lines but I'm not worried if it's not completely straight or perfect. Lace isn't straight or perfect, so it would not give the effect if I was being too perfect, which for me is really hard. <laughs> I'm the type of person that will get out of bed at 2 in the morning to finish my work because I think something didn't turn out. 
or do something over 20,000 times because I didn't like it. But with this, it's not, you don't want to have perfection. You can also two-tone this. I've done that for other posts um, where you would pipe a zigzag line of, let's say, this ivory, and then maybe you want to bring in a beautiful pale pink or um, a light green, or you want to do a holiday color, and you could brush them both down exactly the same. I didn't like the way this little section turned out, and I am working on fondant, so I kind of have to be careful what you would if you have royal icing underneath, because I don't want the water to eat the fondant, but I can brush it away. Nobody will be the wiser, well, except for you and me. I had originally thought this project would look better with a number three tip. That's the other thing I forgot to mention. Um, when you're doing this, if you have, you're going to be giving these cookies to the same person, or they're going to be seen, they're going to baby shower or something, you're going to want to color all your royal icing at one time that you're going to use for the embroidery, because no matter how hard you try, and knowing exactly how much you put in, the color is never going to come out the same. So you can either have a bunch of cookies that have different tones of ivory, or I would make a batch that would go the whole way. And I had intended to do that, like I said, except that um, I didn't like the way that tip looked. And that's pretty much brush embroidery.